Welcome my friends to day 18 of the Azure Advent Calendar. My name is John Deerdorf and I'm a SQL Premier Field Engineer for Microsoft. You can find me at Twitter at SQLMCT and you can visit my website SQLMCT.com. Today we're going to discuss Azure SQL databases. What are Azure SQL databases? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now, Azure SQL Database is commonly known as SQL Database. It is a relational database that is provided as a managed service as part of Microsoft's platform as a service offering, or more specifically, a database as a service. With Azure SQL Database, you can create highly available and highly performative data storage solutions for many of your Azure applications. But the key part that I really enjoy as a developer or as a consultant is that you can get up and running and build a database very quickly. I actually remember back when I was a full-time consultant and a customer needed a database developed. The first part of the project was scoping out hardware, building the Windows Server, installing SQL Server, figuring out licensing. It could take a week or so before I even got to the point of building the database. And then, after the fact, there was the continued maintenance of patches and service packs for both the Windows Server and the SQL Server. But not anymore, my friends. Now with Azure SQL Database, you can get up and running with a brand new database very quickly. Now when we deploy Azure SQL Database, we have three options. We can deploy them as a single deployment, a single database deployment. We can deploy managed instances, or we can deploy out to an elastic pool. Now a single database deployment represents a fully managed and isolated database that is perfect for cloud applications and microservices. Anytime you need a single data source to build an application. This is really great, like I said, for the database designers and developers who want to quickly build and test their databases. Now the next deployment method we have is a managed instance. A managed instance is a fully managed and isolated instance of the database engine. Not just a single database, but the entire database engine that could contain a set of databases that could work together, that could be used together. This is, option is really great for those who are migrating from on-premises SQL Server out to the cloud, out to Azure. And then my third deployment method is the Elastic Pool. An Elastic Pool allows me to deploy a collection of databases that can share resources such as CPU or memory and I can move my databases in and out of that application pool based off my workload or the workload of my applications. This is very useful if I have databases that need more resources during specific times of the week maybe over the weekend or resources at night. I can quickly move databases around and allow them to share the same resources. So that's really, that's a lot of fun. So these are our deployment methods. We're going to focus on just the single database deployment for today. And I want to see that demo. So let's go ahead and jump over to my Azure portal. Here we are. I'm home. I'm on my home page of my Microsoft Azure. To get started, I'll go up and hit my little hamburger icon. And I could go to all services and check out my databases and I could see a lot of the other platform as a service features that are available such as Azure Cosmo DB we have SQL data warehouses SQL stretch databases we see the SQL pools there I believe we have the managed databases but for now I just want to deal with a SQL databases which I can find in the top right of my selection of databases and I currently do not have any Azure databases built under this subscription I cleaned everything out just for this demonstration but I'm going to go ahead and walk through and create a single database the first thing my Azure subscription my MSDN subscription and which resource group I already created a resource group to store my Azure SQL database and I named that resource group Azure Advent I love resource groups because it allows you to group common items together that belong to a single project. Now previously I also created a SQL Server. Now you do not have to maintain this server. 
you don't have to manage the server you just have to create one or specify where your database is going to sit within Microsoft's data centers but again you don't you do not have to manage anything I'm going to go ahead and create a database right here we'll call it Azure Advent 18 because it's the 18th day of the Azure Advent calendar do I want an elastic pool uh, if I hit the little information that might be hard to see in the video uh, elastic pools provide a simple and cost-effective solution for managing the performance of multiple databases within a fixed budget I won't read the rest of it you guys can read it anytime you go through and deploy now again we just want a single database so we'll go ahead and say no here but again if I had multiple databases I could create the elastic pool now here comes the tricky part compute and storage how much compute power and how much storage do I want for this database uh, let's go ahead and click configure database and find out wow there's a lot of information here if I'm using if I if I choose to use a vCore purchasing model I have the option of using general purpose hyperscale or business critical solutions for my environment or I could go back to the previous model of using basic standard premium options of using data transaction units back when Azure SQL databases were first introduced you had to choose your data transaction units on what your compute and memory power was but you didn't really have control over how many processors or memory you just purchased the DTUs but now I believe about a year and a half ago maybe two years ago they introduced the vCore model the vCore allows you to specify uh, your number of cores and memory so you can provision a little bit more specifically if you'd like to know more you click on the little helpful links here how do vCores compare with DTUs if I click on there it comes up with the purchasing models and you see the newer model the vCore purchasing model provides a choice between provision computer tier or serverless but allows you get to be more specific or allows you to uh, specify the specific CPUs and memory that you want to use and then you can see the DTU purchasing model as well but we're going to go ahead and keep it simple and just use two vCores and we're going to set our max data size to 32 gig so go ahead and apply that option for our compute and storage next up we can set our networking where we can set our firewall rules uh, the setting displayed below or read only uh, I can set up my firewall rules uh, I've already set up my configuring network access for my server so I don't need to provide them here and it is a good idea to set up a network infrastructure if you're going to connect to your database you don't have to you can connect SQL Management Studio or Azure Data Studio directly to your database if you want to but for security purposes you might want to set up a Azure network environment additional settings do I want to use a database I already have if I want to bring it uh, use a backup so if I had a backup of a database I can restore the database here or I can just use a sample I'm going to go ahead and use Eventworks LT this is a light version of Eventworks a very light version of Eventworks they're going to use this sample database so we'll go ahead and review and create and it's going to cost me $231 a month if I use it the entire month and again the pricing details is based off the cores the V cores and the data storage you selected uh, on the previous pages so I'll go ahead and click create and we will see the deployment start uh, deployment started today is Saturday December 14th uh, right around noon when I'm recording this so we'll take a moment here as it goes through your deployment is underway and by the power of video we're going to fast forward and there we go my deployment is complete or your deployment is complete that took about three minutes to go through and build our database that was amazing so now that our deployment is finished, now we're going to click on our resource and it will take us over to our Azure SQL database. And there's a lot of features here that we could probably spend another two, three, four hours, maybe an entire day 
talking about Azure SQL Database. So here we can see the overview, we have the activity log, one of my favorite things in preview, the Power Platform, Power BI, Power Apps. Power Apps are amazing with Azure SQL Database. You can really quickly have an application up and running with those Power Apps. Uh, some more configuration, if you want to implement geo-replication, sync to other databases. There's a lot of features here uh, that we can go through. Advanced data security, dynamic data masking, transparent data encryption for security, intelligence performance features, uh, query performance insights. It's amazing. It's some great stuff. Some monitoring tools. But I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to go to the query editor uh, preview model. Uh, preview. I don't know why it's been in preview for two years. Uh, someone needs to come back and remove the preview off of there. But we'll click the query editor and as I mentioned previously, you can connect with Azure Data Studio or SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to connect in. Uh, nobody, told, nobody told my password. It was dot 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 dot. And since I made a copy of the Azure Works LT, the lightweight version, you see this very light version of Azure uh, or sorry, the very light version of the AdventureWorks. I think sales order header, um, I'm familiar with that one. I use that one quite a bit for demonstrations. So we type in select asterisk from sales LT and we'll use sales order header. And for the record, friends don't let friends select asterisks. Uh, that's, that's not good. You should always be specific on the columns that you want. So I'll go ahead and select sales order ID. Did I spell it correctly? We have no idea. Let's try that again. Sales order ID. And one of the, you see the IntelliSense, it still brings up the table, but not the columns. So uh, maybe someday they will uh, get that, or maybe I'm missing something. So we have the order date, uh, say customer ID. So you can see I'm working with that database just like I would any other database. I'll click run. I get results and I can manage everything from the comfort of Azure or like I said connect with other tools or applications so that's it day 18 Azure SQL database like I said we could spend a day two days going over Azure SQL database but this is a quick Christmas gift uh, for everybody I hope everybody enjoys your holidays and have a happy new year